together we know that this is it for us so we're like I already have a bunch of frozen eggs why don't we just go through it this time and freeze embryos so I've been doing everything right I've been eating right I've been not exercising too much I've been just being really careful about everything and I know it probably looks like I've been drinking and partying and like some of my vlogs or insta stories lately but everything's been a mocktail just a cute fancy drink a shot of water i haven't i haven't had anything in weeks i haven't smoked no edibles like n nothing literally i've been so good eating all the right foods and just a few weeks ago i realized that i was a few days late and I was like, well, I'm not on the pill anymore, so maybe I'm just not regular. Maybe, you know, I've been hanging out with Jamie more and friends sink to their friend's cycle. And I had a psychic reading that night, just randomly. I like to do those. And she asked if I had any questions, and I was like, I, I want to know about kids. And... She said, did someone tell you you can't have natural children? And I was like, well, science and doctors said it would be, you know, really close to impossible because my AMH levels are 0 0.28 and that's, that's really bad. So it would be really hard. So I froze my eggs and she was like, I see you having natural children and she's like you have there's a child today waiting for you if you want it and I was like maybe just because you know I, I froze my eggs and yeah sure if I want to have a baby today we go fertilize and unfreeze them so I'm thinking that and then when I got off the, the Skype with her something just clicked and I was like okay yeah my boobs hurt a little bit. I am five days late. May I maybe. I went to the store. I bought a test. And it said pregnant. And I did not believe it. I've never been pregnant in my life. I didn't think it was possible. My best friend Brett was here and I was like, come here, come here. Like, tell me what this says. Like, there's no way. There's no way. And so we're like, like, what did they do and knocked up? We need to go get every test, every brand. We need to go get more. So we go to the store and I buy the most expensive one. It has three tests in it. I'm like, okay, let's try this. And it said pregnant. And then it said pregnant. And then it said yes. And then I tried again the next day. And then I went and got a blood test and everything said I was pregnant. Why? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. This is that's your third one. No. I need to go get a blood test still. Oh god, those lines are even darker now. The 
best, best surprise ever for someone thinking that it can never happen. So, I'm making sure, you know, I make my doctor's appointments. So, because of COVID and everything, my OB said that they didn't want to see any patients before they were 8 to 10 weeks. So being out here in Palm Springs and now by myself because Brock's back to work in San Diego. I just got a little scared and I didn't want to wait that long. So Dr. Gadir said he would get me in for an ultrasound and a blood test just to give me peace of mind to let me know everything was okay. I was feeling really, really tired. My boobs hurt. Like I just, I felt different. Like I, I knew I was pregnant. So, this is our uterus, uh -huh. okay? This is called the gestational sac. This is the pregnancy sac. Around it is all white, which is normal. Nice hormonal changes of the lining changes the color to white. And then in here is the pregnancy sac, right here, okay? And what we're looking for, the first signal of a healthy pregnancy is a little circle called the yolk sac. Sometimes if it's really early, we don't see it. I'm not seeing a clear yolk sac at this point, but let's, we're going to measure the sac itself. Is that bad? Well, it depends how far along you are, and since we don't know exactly how far along you are, I need to do some calculations and see. I'm um, less than a month. Yeah, so less than a month you may not see anything. Okay. And is there always a sac there? This? Yeah. Only if you're pregnant. Usually okay. the uterus is completely collapsed uh -huh. and there's usually nothing going on in there. There's no bubble in here at all. This and this just sit on each other completely flat and closed. Okay. So the one thing we can do right now is wait till next week. Okay? Okay. And see how it progresses. Okay. So I go to Dr. Gadir and he does the ultrasound. And there's just the black circle, there's like my uterus, and there's this sack, and he was like, I'm, I'm concerned, and he didn't want to say this when I was filming. I, I thought like maybe there'd be a heartbeat, like I wanted to like get this moment because they didn't allow spouses or family or anyone in the room with you because of COVID. And so I wanted to film it so Brock could see. And so when I was in there, after I turned the camera off, he's like, I didn't want to say this on there, but I'm concerned. Your levels are pretty low and there's no yolk sac. And he's like, and if you're about five and a half weeks and I'm like, I don't think I'm that far. Like I know when I ovulated, I know what day it had to have happened. And he's like, I think maybe trying to make me feel better. Like, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe it is too early, but I want to see you back in another week and I needed to do blood work every week so we go down to San Diego for Brock's birthday this weekend and when we got back from our date night and I promise I was not drinking though there was no alcohol on any of the drinks this weekend it was all just for show because I didn't want to tell anyone because it's so early and you don't announce in the first trimester. So I was just, you know, keeping up business as usual for the cameras so no one even thought anything. Not that anyone would, but I just, I didn't want anyone even questioning, you know, why aren't you drinking? Why aren't you smoking? Oh, because I'm getting ready to freeze my eggs again. People have already heard that enough. They don't want to hear it again. So I'm just like, I'll just get a virgin strawberry daiquiri. No one's going to question it. And no one did. <laughs> But when we got home from dinner the first night, I went to the bathroom and there was blood. And I got scared and I just felt something was wrong. I see you. I swear animals know when you're sad. So, I looked it up and it said, you know, is spotting in the first trimester is normal. And then it happens to like 20% of pregnancies and they go on to have a healthy pregnancy. I'm scared. <laughs>
You know, it's normal that you can spot a little. Mm hmm keep, keep talking to yourself. Keep explaining what's going on. I know it's common. Mm hmm And I could be okay. Yeah. I'm just scared. And we, you know, we can all cry about being scared. That's okay. I just really want everything to be okay. Everyone wants that. We want that, baby. We're both on the same boat. And then the next day, I was still spotting. And then Sunday night, there was more than spotting. And so Monday, I went and got my blood work done. This is the main normal family doctor, Baker. And when he called me the next day, they're like, your HCG levels are up to 25,000. I don't know what that means, but every two to three days, your levels are supposed to double or triple in the first trimester. So I went from 4,000 to 94.14 to 25,091. So I was like, that's good, that's good, they're going up. But Dr. Gadir was worried that my progesterone and estrogen were really low. They didn't have those numbers back yet. And when I got that call, my progesterone was 7.96, which was already low. It went down to 4.1, which isn't a good sign. But I was still just holding on to that one sentence in one article I found that said, well, if your HCG is going up, it's still probably okay. I and mean, everything else I read, it's not okay. It's not good when that, that progesterone drops. Because it probably means you're having a miscarriage. So now I called my OB. And I said I don't want to wait until my appointment when I'm eight weeks to come in. My level's dropped. And I, I just feel different. I felt pregnant. And now I just feel normal. And I feel good. And I don't want to like feel normal good. I want to feel nauseous. I want to be tired. I want to feel the way I felt two weeks ago. <laughs> and this is the reason why I haven't been out there protesting, but I couldn't tell anyone. But I'm pregnant. I was. And I needed to take care of myself and not put myself with the baby at risk and be out there around people when there's a virus going around, but I couldn't tell anyone, so I just made up excuses of why I wasn't out there when I, I would have been. But, so, my doctor said he'd get me in because he didn't like that my level dropped. And I went in yesterday, and the sack measured at six weeks and four days, and there were like two dots but no embryo for me. It was just empty. There was no heartbeat. And I don't even know if the two dots meant it was like twins, if it, if it's just that the cells that were trying to form together to make an embryo, but he said it at six weeks, there should have been a heartbeat. There should have been more signs. And I'm like, but then why are my HCG levels going up? And he's like, you are still technically pregnant. It's just not really progressing. <laughs> so he asked if, if I would be comfortable just going through this at home because of how far along I am or am not. And I might start bleeding more. And uh, so right now I'm, I'm just waiting to pass it on my own. And if I don't, in the next week, I have to go back for another ultrasound. And uh, he said it could take up to a month. Just terrifying. I have to feel this way for a month, maybe. I might have to go to the hospital and get a DNC, which I don't want to do. But for now, I'm just waiting. And I know that there are probably so many of you who have been through this who are going to reach out and tell me your stories. And 
for that I thank you for sharing your experiences with me because it's probably really gonna help me I know it's common but it doesn't make it any easier <laughs> seeing a few of my friends pregnant right now and knowing I was gonna be there with them and now I'm not it's just really really hard <sighs> but I'm, I'm thankful at least to know now instead of even further down when you get even more attached even though I was already attached. I didn't know how bad I wanted this until I had a little taste of it and then it was just gone so soon. I just, I've always been an open book. And I've always told you guys everything that's going on with me because that's what I feel my job is. My job is to put my life out there so other people can know that they're not alone and that no matter if you're on a television show or, you know, working at a grocery store, I don't know. It's like, we're all people. We all go through similar human life experiences. And this is one of those really, really hard ones. Because now I know, and Brock knows even more than before, that we do really want this. We didn't, we weren't planning on it, we weren't trying. It was just the best surprise, and it was scary. But we know we want this, so. Obviously, I need to get through this first, and it's going to be hard the next few weeks. I want to try again. I don't know when. I do have my eggs that we froze. But I I do know now that I want to be a mom. I do want kids. And I hope that by me putting this out there for you guys, you know that if you have gone through this, you're not alone. And it's not easy. It's really, really sad. And I feel like it's my fault and every doctor can tell me it's nothing you did wrong, but I know I'm like, but my levels are low and what if, what if it was one of the not mature eggs that got fertilized and that's why it didn't make it because it wasn't strong enough because it's my fault. But the doctor told me that a lot of the time this happens because there was something like chromosomally wrong with the baby and that it's better if it happens this way than having a baby with a lot of problems but it's still sad but I know I do know a lot of people who've gone through this I know that my beautiful amazing little sister who I love more than anything in this world wouldn't be here if my mom didn't have a miscarriage before her and I know that the next baby we do have wouldn't have been here. This didn't happen. And that this baby is just making the way for its little brother or sister to come to me one day. But it's still really, really sad. So... Now, I just have to wait. And this is the worst thing I've ever waited for in my entire life. <laughs> None of my friends even know what I'm going through. Because <laughs> I just didn't want to tell anyone because it was just so early. I mean, Brett was here with me, so he found out. <laughs> but I just, this weekend, when I started bleeding, I just had a really weird feeling and no one, unless you've gone through this, no one can understand what it feels like to feel pregnant and then not anymore. So, this is just, you know, part of my really long fertility journey I don't know how much longer this is going to be, but I 
I just always wanted to share my truth and to be as raw and vulnerable as possible. And for all of you women out there and the men who are dealing with this as well, going through this with your partners, just, just know that you're not alone and I empathize with you and I feel your pain because it's just, it's, it's just really, really hard. I've been meditating a lot lately. I've been trying to just think positive. You know, your thoughts are so powerful, Sheena. Just keep keep thinking positive. Every 11-11, I wish for a happy, healthy baby every day. And now I'm just here in Palm Springs by myself because the kitties are here and they need me Brock needs to be in San Diego for work and I don't even want to be in LA because I just don't want to be around anyone right now I need to just mourn this and I know we'll try again um thank you guys for watching this and I'm sure you're commenting that you've been through something similar and sending me your experiences because with everything I've been through before whenever you guys reach out and tell me that you get it it really does help so thank you and I don't I don't know what else to say but I'll always, no matter how hard it is, I'm always going to put out what I'm going through. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me. Just to wrap up this vlog, I wanted to let you guys know that yesterday I had my final appointment with my OB. I thought I was just going in for an ultrasound and then we would figure out the next steps. But when I got there yesterday, he was ready to do the DNC right then and there, which I was not prepared for. I was terrified. My mom and I are sitting in the waiting room and she was like, wait, like I'm surprised they're letting me in just with all the COVID stuff. And I was like, no, remember he specifically said like, when you come back, make sure you have someone with you. And just thinking it was just another ultrasound. And she was like, well, what if they're doing the procedure today? And I started freaking out. Cause I was like, oh my God, I didn't even think about that. I just thought, he just for support said to make sure you know i had someone here um but it was because he was prepared to do the dnc right then and there i thought i would maybe have to be put to sleep go to the hospital i don't know how they do those things nowadays but he was able to just do it in his office so they gave me a norco a couple advil an antibiotic and also to, I think it's called like Hallison or something similar to like a Xanax that dissolved under my tongue and made me really loopy, but like slightly sedated, but not put to sleep. And then they did some like local anesthesia, I guess on my cervix, uterus, whatever, I don't know. So I didn't feel it, but I felt it. It was like a five minute painful pap smear. I cried. It was not fun but thankfully it was done rather quickly um I was really really out of it after I had sent some messages that I looked back at today and didn't even remember talking to people I was really out of it 
So, um, Brock drove up yesterday. My mom went to the grocery store for me, got me all of my favorite things. I had a nice froyo and just cuddled my boyfriend and watched some Netflix and just tried to relax. I got a good 12 hours sleep, which I think my body really needed because I've just felt so lethargic and sad and just out of it lately. But today I'm having a good day. And like I said on my podcast, I'm trying to embrace when I have those good days because I don't know when I'm going to have them. And he said the day after the procedure that I might not be bleeding that much, but for like four to five days to come, it might get heavier or worse. So while I'm having a light, non-cramping, easy day, I'm gonna just try and enjoy that while we're in LA, go see some waves, I miss the beach, and then um, head back to the desert tomorrow. Probably gonna go and see some of my friends tonight who I really missed and, uh, you know, just try and look forward to the future. Um, thank you everyone who has watched this entire vlog. I'm sure it wasn't easy. And thank you to everyone who listened to my podcast. Like I said, I just wanted this to come out on my platform in my way with my words and my emotion, not an edited interview or anything like that. But I've always been an open book. I always will be, the good, the bad, all of it. And I so appreciate all of you who have reached out and shared your stories. My heart goes out to all of you, anyone who's been through this. It's the absolute worst. And I just want to say that all of you reaching out has really, really meant a lot to me. And I love you all. And thank you so, so much for watching and for everything. I'll see you guys next week. Just in case this is one of the times when the person working at the store recognizes me, Brett is going to buy that for me. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to think right now. I, I feel like, I think like, no way, but then also I'm like, I mean, okay, yeah. It's not that there was a 0% chance. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so I did one more. So this is test number four. And there's two lines again. They say there can be false positives all the time. And I'm freaking out a little bit because that is clearly two blue lines. So get this. So Brock, when he called me back right now, he was like, I just walked up to your car to move it because he parked it under a tree and there was a bunch of blue flowers all over my car. Weird. Yeah. And, and Jake, did Jamie see you? Someone saw a boy. Yeah, everyone's said a boy. Like some have said a boy and a girl, but everyone's pretty much said a boy. And then Jamie what said she saw, yeah, she said she saw like yellow and like Winnie the Pooh and like this nursery like overlooking the beach and. Well, now we have a 
after the nursery yellow anyways. Like, just because that's what she saw. Like, that's a cute theme anyways. Yeah, so... That's crazy. Well, I hope everything works out how it's supposed to work out in your favor. Whatever that is. <sighs> I know, I'm just like, I'm... Yeah, Salem. I'm shook too. I just like don't know what to think. Like I'm like Yeah. I don't know, but I feel like mom manifested it when we were like all hanging out on Mother's Day and stuff and mom was just saying like we were it, well, that was Mother's Day. So that was what right before mom's birthday. So it would have been before you were pregnant. Yeah. And uh, how mom was just like saying about how bad she wants a grandkid and like all of that stuff. And I was like, well, not right now. And she's like, but if you did. <laughs> the fifth stick this morning still points to pregnant. So I'm gonna have my Greek yogurt this morning since I need to cut out my feta cheese off my avocado toast. But they did say if it's pasteurized, yeah. it's okay. <sighs> but yeah. All sticks point to pregnant. I'm so hard because I can't see anything. Because we, we, you're not, you're not meant to know you're pregnant. You're two weeks to three weeks. No, I'm probably about. You're about four weeks now. Four and a half, maybe. Okay. So he's still in developmental phases, babe. So many people go through this and don't know they're pregnant and have miscarriages. You're just going through it aware. Okay? Besides, for a cranky bitch, I thought you didn't want to have a kid. I know, but no, we really do. <laughs> I'll give you a kiss. The miracles, you're pregnant. Right? Yeah. We adopted the doctors. I mean, like, I know I'm not, I don't have, like, bad cramps or anything right now. You're just thinking too much into it and you feel something. And you, you feel, like, your digestive tract might be literally digesting and you think it's moving and it could be something else. You just answered your own question, honey. I just want it to stop because it happened last night after dinner. What, the cramps? No, like, I was, like, spotting. Yeah, it did start. And then, the, then today, this morning, it was gone. Exactly. And then right now, it started again. But because we're moving around, you're active. Like your body moves. It you goes through cycles. Oh, stop! 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 You're going down okay. the coast. Oh. You're getting upset about the wrong things now. Stop it. And the reality is, like, so many women go through this and don't get past this first stage. So many of them. That's reality. I want you to understand that it's not because you're broken or I'm broken. If anything, it's a miracle nonetheless. You're just so aware of this right now. Okay? And you didn't realize that you wanted to have kids so badly with me. <laughs> <laughs> you're cute in there. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, it's just, it just, if, if it's too good to be true, you can't, you try and pretend it's not okay. Okay, baby? And if it is okay, it's gonna work out, okay? And it's just, I know it's out of my control. It's completely, we've done our best. I gave him my best shot, I hit a home run. You catch or caught the ball, we're good. <laughs> Now we just let her go with the little man or girl work in there. And then we hope that everything works out okay. But if you keep thinking it's going to not be good because you want it to be so good, that's what's going to get you in trouble. Okay. Okay. Now hopefully being here, this is going to help give you a little bit of distraction too. Otherwise, if you're at home, you'll just be thinking about this. Well, this is worse. Do you want to go home? Do you want me to order you like a club, sa club sandwich or something like that? Considering you've been eating bacon this whole time. Bacon? Um, excuse me, what do you order from McDonald's? Sausage McMuffin. What do you reckon is sausage McMuffin made Beef. out of? Sausage? Beef. Sausage. Beef sausage. We'll look it up. 
And I didn't eat McDonald's today. Not today. I'm just saying. And then when you're at home, you're going to have your beef. He's the funny guy now. Mama, hilarious. I've got your baby, don't need to be crying. We've got this, okay. Take a breath. I'll turn the camera off. You don't need this. You're good. You're better than this. You got this. You got this, baby. Thinking about you all night. I've been searching for this all night.